Today we are shoving a bunch of stuff into a waffle maker to see what's worthy of being a waffle maker munchie and we'll also see which ones aren't worthy as well. And I've never tried any of these so you're going to go on a waffle experimenting journey with me so let's get started. First up, we're going to do a quesadilla, and for mine, I'm going to whip up some refried beans, which honestly on their own could be a munchy meal, and I've been known to just eat a big bowl of beans like this, but we're going to get our waffle maker, give it a spritz, and then lay down a tortilla. And then we're going to sprinkle on some vegan cheese and a good dollop of our beans. I tried to keep them in the middle since I knew they would spread out a bit, and then next, the other tortilla, and now we press. A few minutes later and bam, and despite my efforts, I still overfilled this one, but that's all right. We're gonna get her out of there and then slice it up and do a good old taste test. And honestly, my first impression was this is pretty good, but I think a regular quesadilla is even better, mostly because the tortilla gets more browned and crispy. So I tried it again, and this time I sprayed the tortillas as well. Oh, and I also cooked up some vegan ground beef and seasoned it with taco seasoning. I used a bigger tortilla to try to cut down on the overflowing beans and cheese, and as you can see here, that didn't really work either. And after the taste test, I had the same takeaway. While these were good, a traditional quesadilla is just better and easier, so unfortunately, I don't think I can recommend this as a waffle maker munchie. Next up, we're gonna get some Just Egg, and I like to add flour and baking powder to it, which makes it a bit fluffier and easier to work with. Basically, for every half cup of Just Egg, you wanna add two teaspoons of flour and an eighth teaspoon of baking powder. I'm also gonna grill up some bell peppers and onions, as well as some vegan breakfast sausage, and then let's go ahead and add our bell peppers and sausage to the waffle maker, along with some Just Egg, and why not some vegan cheese, if you please. Waffle that for a few minutes and then voila, and yeah, a little overflow, which is not a big deal unless you're a nerd like me, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. And I decided to go ahead and douse this one in some hot sauce to mimic the usual syrup. And I gotta say, I really dug this one. It's kinda like a handheld omelet, albeit a bit crispier. But overall, I really love the flavor and texture of this one, so I would definitely rate it as a waffle maker munchy worthy munchy. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that. Anyways, let's go on to some tater tots. And these have been thawing overnight, so they aren't frozen. But we're gonna go ahead and lay some of those down. We're gonna add some green onions and these bacon bits are accidentally plant-based. So let's go ahead and add some of those. And we're gonna go ahead and waffle that for a few minutes. And then I thought it was done, but it wasn't quite crispy enough. So I threw it back in there for another couple minutes. And this one came out quite glorious, I gotta say. And I realized I forgot to throw in some vegan cheddar cheese, but that's all right. I'm gonna whip up a quick cheese sauce to dip them in. And I mean, this shouldn't come as a shock, but a tater tot waffle is freaking scrumptious as heck. So yes, this is definitely waffle maker munchie worthy. All right, now let's do a s'mores waffle so we can test out something on the sweeter side. And I'm just using some vegan waffle mix to keep it simple. We're gonna get some of that in there and then we're gonna add in some chopped up chocolate and marshmallows, both of them vegan, of course. And I didn't realize this, but that was a huge boo-boo. For one, the chocolate got a little burned and the marshmallows melted to basically nothing. So I tried it again, only this time I laid down a layer of waffle mix and then the chocolate and marshmallows and then I covered them with another layer of the waffle mix. We're gonna give that a waffle and then while that was much better, I still couldn't really sense the marshmallows. They kind of just melted into the waffle and I couldn't even really tell they were there. And to be honest, I think a much better method would be making a regular waffle and then drizzling that with melted chocolate and marshmallows. So as is, I don't think this is waffle maker munchie worthy. All right, last but not least is a burger. And look, I had to for science. So we're gonna toast our buns, cook a vegan burger patty, and then assemble like so. I'm gonna be doing it in the classic McDonald's cheeseburger style with pickles, onions, ketchup, and mustard. Now, when I waffled it, I realized that adding condiments was probably a bad idea as they all spilled out, which gave us some nice caramelized bits, of course, but we really lost a lot of that sauce. On top of that, the buns being toasted caused them to dry out but I was determined to make it work. So I tried again with untoasted buns and no condiments. And you might say, wait a minute, you need some kind of sauce. And to that, I agree. So I whipped up a quick burger sauce and I dipped them in that. And I gotta say that that was a huge upgrade. And while I think I prefer eating a burger in the traditional way, it's definitely kind of fun and interesting to make a burger like this too. So I'm gonna proclaim this to be a waffle maker munchie worthy as well. And there you have it. I'd say everything but the s'mores waffle and quesadilla are a good idea. Even the quesadilla isn't a bad idea. If you're already making a bunch of waffle munchies, you might as well. So most of these are pretty great. And let me know if you like this video and what other things you'd like to see me waffle in the future. And if you want to watch another experimental video, check out this one right here. And until then, I'll see you all next time.